uh, sitting here over at uh, Pete's place, we're talking to Pete. We're going to talk a little bit about t technology and how much difference is made in fishing and how it can make you a better fisherman. Uh, Pete, you know what? Fishing's changed a lot, hasn't it? it? We talked about that in another video, but it's incredible what has changed. But if you had to pick out one thing, I think one time you said before it was a mapping, but there's a lot more than that even. Oh, there's mapping. I guess that's the the single biggest thing that when you and I were talking about this topic in time, because I think that, you know, as far as total hours, you know, going out and learning mid-lake structures and stuff like that, especially on bigger pieces of water, that just takes a lot of time, and that's something that uh, you and I did a lot of, and then all of a sudden these maps came along. And as an old guy, I kind of said that's <laughs> cheating to a certain... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, as far as it, it, it is and it is, and obviously it's tremendous technology we have now, but it, uh, you know, that was the biggest single time factor, but obviously the other thing with electronics is just the, the ability now, too, to be able to see fish and structure in so much more detail, not only below you, uh, and not only sitting still, but at speed, and then also now off to the side. Well, you know, you were talking about side imaging stuff, but you know, if somebody's getting into the sport of fishing, or whether they've been in it for a while, if they're buying a new boat, or they're gearing up for ice fishing, I, I guess what I'd have to say is the best thing they can do is look at, when they're rigging out that new boat, for instance, is some of the electronics they can put on it is, is going to be the most important thing they can do. with The Humminbird line of stuff, you run the Humminbird stuff I have for a number of years, uh, not only they got good products, they got really super customer support, and uh, they have updates come out on the equipment all the time. You know, and the equipment alone, when you add it to the boat and you couple it with the fact that you can, can now tie it to Minnesota stuff with the spot lock yeah. and the eye pilot, uh, that alone right there, once you learn how to use this stuff, makes a huge difference in how effective you are out there. Yeah, it really does, John, and, and, and frankly, the uh, the price of the units, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of the other positive things, but I mean, they really are, they really are priced reasonably, but amazing for what they do, frankly. They've done a lot. I mean, yeah, yeah, they really, they, they really have, and, and I agree with you, if you're going to, if you're going to scrimp on something, you know, if you got a bit of a budget putting your boat together, I mean, uh, you know, make sure that uh, one of the top priorities anyway, I would say the top priority is, is quality electronics. Make sure you have that. Well, talking about the electronics, setting electronics up, you've got the whole Helix line, the fives would be the most economical to get in there. They still have a lot of capability. In fact, the Helix 5 now will do the auto chart live, which will make the maps for you if you want to remap a lake or map a small lake that you don't have a map of. Yeah. Uh, it also has a capability a lot of them will run Auto Chart Live now, which if you uh, are not Auto Chart Live, but Smart Strike, which it actually, have you played with that Smart Strike? I have not. I have, and I'll tell you what, it's actually fairly accurate. I mean, I found spots that maybe I should fish. I think of myself, I've never fished these spots, but maybe I should. Then I found other spots that, nah, nah, I didn't. Want. But the general overall, it, it, it actually pinpointed some of my best fishing spots on lakes like the Chippewa Flowage and other lakes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I haven't messed <laughs> so with it. So the technology yet. is there. I mean, it's it's incredible what the stuff will do. And even ice fishing. I know we've got the Helix Seven ice machine sitting here, and uh, you know, everybody goes to the flasher unit. I mean, they want to use the flasher when it comes to ice fishing. Uh, I find myself going away from years ago now, going away from the flasher, going to more of the regular screen I look at in the summertime. You know, I think it's personal preference, but yeah, I've gone, I've gone to the sonar, and I use flashers for years. And there's a, there's a lot of argument that a flasher is more real time. I don't know that I, that no. I buy that anymore at all. Uh, I guess uh, you know the one thing with this particular unit, you know, and, and obviously the fives too, John. But uh, you know, if you want, you can have both. You can yeah. have a, you can have a split screen where you got the, you got the sonar there, and you've got the flasher now. So. You know, that's real interesting to, to watch, and of course, it's amazing, you, you think about when we first started ice fishing, and you would just drop a, a jig down, or whatever, you know, bait you were using, and hope something bites, you, you find the bottom when your line goes slack, and you still caught fish that way, but once you start using these, you don't want to quit, you just, well, you, I, I if somebody, if, if I arrived to a spot, even if I knew the bite was good, 
and somehow somebody lifted, you know, through osmosis or whatever, my helixes out of the truck on the way, I wouldn't even want to fit. Yeah. There's something, once you get used to having that and being able to watch that, see the fish, play with the fish, pattern what your lure's doing and how they react to it and how to trigger them, that's the one big advantage that you've got with, with these these days that you were na never able to tell if you had a fish down there before and you weren't able to pattern what what you could possibly do to make the fish strike and that's what you can do more so with the sonar that's where I like the sonar part of it as opposed to the flasher is I can get a better idea watching my lure what what I'm doing and how the fish are reacting to it and you can pattern hopefully what what will make them strike yeah that's a good point you know you've got some history of what happened rather than looking at the flasher and if you look away you miss the flash right you know and also the units they have the what they call the real-time sonar rts on the side if you want to put it up that gives you a vertical flasher so you could be looking at the full sonar right. screen and still have a vertical flasher you know so there's a lot of things out there you know and as far as learning how to use the things I know there's a lot of information out there. Somebody feels kind of intimidated by the electronics. And I, I, a lot of people do because I actually get paid to take people out sometimes guiding to go out and, and fish and teach them how to use their hummingbirds and electronics. But there's a ton of information out there on the internet, Pete. Yeah, there really is, John. And, and uh, Now, I, uh, full disclosure, John is kind of the geek guy, and, and I'm the one that runs to a guy like him to a certain extent. Sometimes I go, hey, hey, my friends, show me how to do this. Uh, once uh, they're, they're actually quite easy to figure out. Yeah. Uh, these days, I think, on your own, if you just start playing with the buttons, even if you don't have the information in front of you. But it truly is, even though I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an anti, and I'm, I'm slowly getting there, but I've always kind of been anti looking it up on the internet, but you're absolutely right. I mean, if you go onto YouTube, and if you got a question and you put it up there, you'll probably find a video that will, will tell you how to do that in real simple fashion. Well, Hummingbirds went to extreme lengths to make the, the menu system and everything user-friendly and make it they easy are. for people. I just think people get intimidated. They look at, I do sometimes look at stuff and, and just like, oh, but if you take the time to look at it and think about it, you can actually do it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and But a lot of people like to, you know, learn a little better by actually watching somebody do it as opposed to, uh, you know, looking at a manual or something like that. So, either way. Uh, they're they're really overall it's amazing what they do and they're pretty hard to or easy to figure out. You know a lot of things I use in the ice fishing in the winter time. I, I fish a lot the same way and you know at one time I did probably 80 90 percent musky and now it's like maybe it's 75 percent panfish with families and stuff guiding. But I, I fish a lot of the same things. I do the same things. I use my spot lock to position vertically over. I I can see my jigs on. My panfish jigs, uh, much like the wintertime, a lot of times, a lot of that information that you pick up in the wintertime, you actually helps you in the summertime if you want to fish panfish that way. Oh, that's really true. Yeah, it is. It is definitely transferable, and uh, yeah, it's it's all interesting stuff, Jim. Pete, I want to thank you for coming on here, and uh, let's hope that we get rid of winter here soon enough. Uh, ice fishing's oh. fun, but. Uh, uh, open water is a lot better. I can't get a big enough hole in the water in the ice to troll, you know. <laughs> Actually, the best ice fishing is, is coming yet, but i got to admit, I'm thinking a little bit about my recon boat about now. <laughs> <laughs>
Autor 